Proverbs chapter 11. Proverbs chapter 11. Uh, this evening we're going to try to bring you the message. I feel like the Lord's laid on my heart. been dealing with it for uh, my heart for a few couple weeks, I guess, about preaching on this subject tonight. And uh, Proverbs chapter 11. And verse 30. Please listen. Everybody that's saved, listen. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 30. I've never preached this message before until tonight. This outline, I preached on this subject lots of times. But I believe it's time. It's time that our church... All of us as a group, as individuals, backed up, took a real good look at this and see where we stand before God. Verse 30 says, The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that winneth souls is wise. I want to preach to you tonight on the subject, Four Calls for Soul Winning. The other day, there's a preacher came by and he was wanting some tapes and I let him in the tape room over here and he began to talk to me a little bit. He said, I hadn't saw him in a while. He's pastoring across the mountain. He said, Brother Danny, I just want to tell you something. He said, if there's one thing I've noticed about you, your church, or this church he meant, he said, uh, of all these years I've watched y'all, he said, I've noticed one thing and I've learned a great lesson. And that your church here in Marion, you, you people here, has stayed after souls. Now, I consider that a great compliment. I really did. I consider that a great compliment. So many churches get sidetracked and die out, cool off, quit, reaching out for those that are lost. I hope and pray that the day will never come when we keep our joy and our salvation and our happiness inside these four walls. The Bible said, He that winneth souls is wise. We had out here a Thursday night, right at 41 people out visiting, telling people about the Lord. Not counting the one Thursday morning, not counting Saturday morning the bus workers, not counting those that just went to see somebody on their own Tuesday, Monday, whatever, and dealt with them and talked to them about the Lord. Not counting the people who witnessed the people on the job or a school. I, I would like to believe, I'd like to believe that we'd have on any given week 100 people who tell somebody else about the Lord Jesus Christ. I think we ought to. Amen? Amen. Really, I, I believe that. Um... If we believe what we say we believe, listen, if we believe what we say we believe, we are criminals if we don't tell other people about it. If we do not believe what we say we believe, we're hypocrites. One more time. If we believe what we say we believe and don't tell other people about it, we're a criminal. If we believe, if we don't believe what we say we believe, then we're hypocrites. I'm going to tell you this evening, there's four calls for soul winning. I want to be a soul winner. I want to be a better soul winner. I'm not much of one. By the grace of God, the Lord's been dealing my heart about it. We got so tied up in building and so tied up in all these other things. That's not what's going to matter one of these days, folks. The Lord Jesus Christ walked in here tonight in, in person. He walked in that door and sat down right here. Do you think he'd be interested in how pretty that school is? Not in the least. Or how pretty this building is. What if I said, Lord, let me show you our nice landscaping over here. He wouldn't care about that. Amen. Now, we've got to have all these things. It's nice and I appreciate it. But you know what the Lord would want to know about? Where's them souls that I died for? Where are those people that I gave my life for? What are you doing to reach them people that I died for? George Whitfield, the famous evangelist, said... Oh, Lord, 
Give me souls or take my soul. When's the last time you heard a Christian that sincere? Oh Lord, give me souls or take my soul. Henry Martin, the missionary, kneeling on India's strands, cried out, Here, let me burn out for God. David Brainerd, the great missionary to the American Indians, 1740, said this, Lord, to Thee I dedicate myself. Oh, accept me and let me be Thine forever. Lord, I desire nothing else. I desire nothing more. The last words of his diary were, Come, Lord Jesus, come quickly. Amen. Thomas Akempis in the 1400s said, Give what Thou wilt and how much Thou wilt and when Thou wilt. Set me where Thou wilt and deal with me in all things just as Thou wilt. D.L. Moody said, Use me, my Savior, for whatever purpose in whatever way you may require. Here is my poor heart and empty vessel. Fill it with Thy grace. Martin Luther said, Do Thou, my God, do Thou, stand by me against all the world's wisdom and reason. Do it! Thou must do it. Stand by me, Thou true eternal God. John McKenzie prayed a prayer of a young missionary when he said, Lord, send me to the darkest spot on earth. Pray and hide. The missionary to India said, Father, give me these souls or I die. Lord Jesus, I do this for thee. Another lady prayed. John Hunt, the missionary to the Fiji Islands, on his dying bed was saying, Lord, save Fiji. Save Fiji. Lord, save these people, O Lord. Have mercy upon Fiji. Save Fiji. I'm telling you tonight, ladies and gentlemen, there is a four calls for soul winning. Number one, the call, there is a call from above. There's a call from above. The most clear command of God to a Christian is to reproduce and take the gospel to other creatures in this world. The first two letters in the word God are go. The first two letters in the word gospel are go. It's a, it's, it's, it's a, it's a clear cut command of God. Bible said, Jesus told the disciples before he left, go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. And then he said, you teach them to do whatsoever I have commanded you. He told those disciples that before he left. Now let's just imagine this. Let's just imagine. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Start going with Ken over there. From Ken on over that way, I want you guys to stand up. Let's say these are the twelve disciples here tonight. Of course, there's missing one by this time, but let's just say tonight there were twelve. I was, I was the Lord Jesus going back to heaven. And all you people out there, you're the, you're the whole world. There's all the continents. North America, South America, uh, Europe, Asia, Japan, China, uh, Africa, Asia, North, uh, the, the, the Antarctica, and South America, and the, the continents, all, in, in all over the world. There's different continents and different people. No, the only way you're going to know about God is if somebody comes and tells you. And the Lord said, Boys, I'm getting ready to go back to heaven. Now the last thing I'm going to tell you guys before I go back to heaven is I want you to go into all the world and preach the gospel. What is the gospel? The gospel that He died, that He was crucified, that He was buried, and that He rose again the third day, right? He said, you tell them that. And then baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. And they start, they get ready to take off. And the Lord said, now wait a minute, boys, I'm not through. He said, you teach them what I have taught you. The clearest command in Scripture, preachers, is to not to preach to crowds, but to individuals. I believe the Lord wants us to preach to individuals. But if you check your Bible, you'll find out that the best sermon and probably some of the greatest that Jesus preached was to individuals. The woman at the well, Nicodemus, people like that. One person! We think, boy, I'd love to get up in front of a big crowd and preach. Boy, we need to take it to that man, that woman down the street, that little boy over here somewhere, that little fellow that lives across the way. We need to do what the Bible says. The command of God is take that thing to every creature in this world. Brother, we're not a church like we're supposed to if we're not trying to get that done. All right? 
He says, I'm going back to heaven. He ascends up in the cloud. Okay, he's gone now. What's their job? All right, what I want you to do, I want each one of you fellas, you go into the uttermost part of the world over there. You, Brother Dean, you go into the uttermost part of the world over here. You find you a little spot and just get there right now. Go ahead. All right? They're, they're missionaries. They're going out. They didn't sit down with their Bibles. They didn't sit back and talk back and watch TV. They're going to find a center. All right, find you a center. Every one of you, find you a center now, okay? All right. Now, when you find your sinner, stop that. When you find your sinner, stop that. Now, wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. These missionaries are gone. There's one gone over yonder out to Kansas. There's one in California. There's one in Fiji. There's one in Australia. There's one in the other part of South America. There went one to North America. There went one up in New York. There went one over in Africa. There went one over here. There went one over there. there these guys are all over. Now, what if they'd have just sat down? What if they'd have just sit down and said, well, I'm saved, I tell you. I, I don't really feel led uh, to go out and tell anybody. Listen, you do, listen to me. You do not have to feel led to do something God's already told you to do. One more time. You do not have to feel led to do what God has already told you to do. It is a dangerous doctrine. Listen to me. It's a dangerous doctrine. This doctrine that a lot of preachers preach nowadays that you're supposed to feel some kind of move coming on you before you ever tell a sinner about God. You don't have to feel it to come to church. You don't have to feel it to eat. You don't have to feel it to buy you something to eat. You don't have to feel it to go to bed at night. You don't have to feel it to do nothing else. You don't have to feel it to tithe. You do it because it's right and because God said to Thank God we can feel it. Thank God God does move us. Thank God He does lay people on our heart. But listen, brother, if I'm out in this world and I cross paths with a sinner, I don't have to have goosebumps on my back before I tell a sinner he's going to hell. That man's lost. All right, everybody got your soul? All right, talk to that sinner there. Just act like you're witnessing to him, okay? All right, amen. Bow their head, close their eyes, they're saved. All right, stand up. All you converts, stand up. Stand up. All you converts, stand up. Now how many we got? We got 24 Christians in the whole world. 24 Christians in the whole world. Now you take your Bible. Look, boys. Take your Bible and, uh, uh, and you teach them to teach, to, to what the Lord taught you. you. The Lord taught you. Go into all the world. Preach the gospel to every creature. All right. All right. Look at here. Now everybody go soul winning. Everybody go soul winning right now. All right. Young converts, old converts. Everybody go soul winning. Find your soul. Hurry right, now, if you can't find a soul in here, there ain't no hope for you. All right, uh, listen. Everybody find your soul. Everybody found you one? All right. Now, you're witnessing to them. You're witnessing. You're witnessing. God got a hold of their heart. They bow their head. Shut up now. Witness quieter. All right. Everybody look. Okay. Now they all got saved. Woo! Hallelujah. All right, converts, stand up. Now how many we got? Not 36. 48. 48 Christians in the world. 48 Christians in the world. My soul, my soul, wouldn't it be a blessing if everybody did what the Lord said to do? All right, all you Christians, you find one. Find you a sinner. Find you a sinner, all you Christians. All right, find you a sinner. They sinners in here. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Do it quietly, quietly, quietly. All right, all right. We all found us a sinner. Everybody's found a sinner. Okay, all right. Everybody got saved. You stand up. All you converts, stand up. How many Christians we got now? Ninety-six Christians. Shh. Listen, disciples. How many souls have you won? Three. The disciples have won three souls. And there's ninety-six Christians in the world. Not to mention their kids growing up. And they'll reach in their own family and take them to church. You see how you see how come New Man Baptist Church is here right now? See how it got to North Carolina and a little eighteen year old boy heard it at Nebo Baptist Church and I got in. Somebody said, I believe it, Lord. Somebody said, I take the gospel, Lord. Somebody took the clear command of God. There's a call from above. God said go. God said go. All right, everybody be seated back in your original seats. God said go. Let me tell you what the Bible said. The Lord found an old boy out there one time and he said go work in the vineyard. 
The Bible said one time the Lord said, Go out in the highways and hedges and compel them to come in. Listen to me. The Bible said, Go out in the highways and hedges and compel them to come in. That word compel means strong. It don't mean invite. The word compel don't mean invite. The word compel mean, I mean, it means grab them. I mean, he said, yes, you are going with me too. Come on. That's what it means. That's what the word compel means. It means, come on, you're going. I'm taking you to the house of God. I've been telling the teenagers out there in Sunday school how to be a soul winner, how to take the Bible, how to tell somebody about the Lord. We're coming up on our fall program. God wants to do something. I believe God wants to do something. I believe we can see men, women, boys, and girls walk these aisles being saved. I believe we can see them saved in the home if we'll realize there's a call from above. Everybody's called and commanded. He said, I thought that was just the preacher's job. You read your Bible, brother. He said to every creature, and you teach them every creature what I've taught you. Amen. He said D.L. Moody saw a picture one time of, of water, big water like it was raging sea. And a man was holding like this and he was holding to the cross and the cross was lifting him out, lifting him out of the water. And he thought, my, what a magnificent picture. And then he said he saw another picture after that that just completely spoiled his idea of the first picture. He said he saw another picture where there was the deep waters and the waves were uh, 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 splashing around and a woman had a hold of the cross and it was lifting her out with one hand and down here she had a friend like this pulling her out. Amen? There's a call, brother, from above. You read your Bible in the first few chapters of the Gospel. Andrew, the Bible tells us, won his brother. He found out that Jesus was the Messiah, won his brother. John chapter 1, verse 40, 41 and 42. Philip won Nathaniel. John chapter 1, verse 45. Peter, the soul winner in the book of Acts. Paul, the soul winner in Acts 16. The Lord Jesus Christ, personal soul winner there all the way through the Bible. How God's heart must grieve and break when the church is... Is, is tied up in 50,000 things in civic organization and clubs and all kinds of things while people are lost and without God and dying and going to a devil's hell. Amen? Brother, listen. When the corn is ripe, the corn don't just come and jump in the barn. He said the harvest is ripe. Pray that the Lord will send laborers into the harvest. There's got to be somebody. Go get it and bring it in and get them saved. There's a call from above. Number two, there's a call from without. There's a call from without. I hear somebody calling me from heaven saying, Danny, go tell them! Then I hear a call from without in the community. Book of Acts, there the Paul had a dream or vision one night and he seen this fellow and this fellow was saying, come over into Macedonia and help us. God let him see that vision of that man who was dying, lost, heathen, heathen without God. And brother, he went over there and told him about the Lord. Listen to what I'm getting ready to tell you folks. This got a hold of my heart the other day. The other evening, Friday evening over there, when, when the couple's trip went to Gatlinburg, I got to studying in the motel. And I got to studying, I got so tore up. God got a hold of my heart. Everywhere I went that evening, I witnessed people. I took tracks and I give them to people. You know why? Because God put it on my heart. Let me know. Brother, listen, if we don't tell them, nobody else will. Listen, if you lined up all the lost people in this world tonight, starting at your front door, single file, like this, got them all from all the continents and put them in a line, that line would reach around the world 30 times. That line grows 20 miles a day. All the people that are reaching the age of accountability. If you drove 50 miles an hour for 10 hours a day in your car past those lost people, it would take 4 years and 40 days to drive past every one of them. And by then the line will have grown 30,000 more miles. Right after we started the church, boy, I was all excited. And I said, Glory to God, we're going to have a church. You know, and I was all excited and everything. And I ran into a lady who used to live up down the road here. And she said, Danny, she said, I've heard about your church and I'm happy. 
And she said, my boys are out in sin. And she said, I thought, Lord, maybe Danny in that church is an answer for my boys. Maybe they can reach them. They won't come to my church. Lord, maybe they can reach them. And I thought, Lord, have mercy. There's a call from without. You listen to me tonight, folks. There are people in McDowell County praying, Oh God, maybe New Manor has the answer. Maybe they can reach my boy. They've heard about you boys and teenagers getting on fire for God and they're just hoping and praying maybe one of you will get their kid out there to Pizza Hut. There's mamas with broken hearts afraid their kid's going to wind up on drugs or get arrested or maybe wind up pregnant or in jail or maybe even with AIDS or something. And they're saying, God, let somebody from that church find my boy and talk to him. They are. It's happening. It's happening. All you boys that go out, there's a call from without. I want to quote you a man that I read of quote from several years ago it made me feel guilty as a dog and it still does he was a famous infidel he didn't know what a Christian was he called it a religionist but he said this quote he said if I were a religionist were I a religionist did I truly firmly consistently believe that the knowledge and practice of religion in this life influences destiny in another life or another, religion should be to me everything. I would cast aside earthly enjoyments as dross, earthly cares as follies, and earthly thoughts and feelings as less than vanity. Religion would be my first waking thought and my last image when sleep sank me in unconsciousness. I would labor in her cause alone. I would esteem one soul gained for heaven worth a lifetime. Of suffering. You know what that atheist said? He said, if I believe what you people say you believe, he said, I'd gladly suffer my entire life if I could win one soul to keep them out of hell and take them to heaven. One soul. There are people who go to church every Sunday who are lost and know it. I heard of a woman not long ago, or I read about her. This happened a long time ago, but I read about it. And she said that the uh, preacher preached on salvation. And she went, called a preacher and she said, Preacher, I go to church every Sunday and I'm not saved. He said, Why don't you get saved? And she said, Because I don't want to embarrass my husband and my family and tell everybody. He said, Listen, lady, you'd be better off to embarrass now in front of a few people at church than you would be at the judgment and see God say, No, I never knew you and turn you away into the lake of fire and all that. He said, There's people sitting right in churches every Sunday that are lost. Somebody needs to talk to them. Somebody needs to sit down with the Bible and talk to them. Carl Hatch that I had on my radio program this morning, that great evangelist. He's got one of the most amazing testimonies you ever heard in your life. That man was a drunk. He beat his wife. He threatened to kill her. He's one of the most wicked, evil men. If you've not heard that testimony, you ought to get it. You ought to get it. It's absolutely astounding how that God delivered him out of a life of drunkenness and sin. And boy, he said this. He said, I lived in a little old house for I don't know how long. He said, never, not one time did somebody knock on my door tell me there's a better life not one time guarantee you I guarantee you these people here on drugs in McDowell County that are wondering where we're at they're probably wondering where I've heard about old Danny Castle he ain't never said nothing to me boy that cuts in my heart there's a call from without you shouldn't have to be fussed at or even preached to to have a burden to be a soul winner for the glory of God Number three, there's a call from within. There's a call from within. When I start thinking about the man at the gas station, the lady at the restaurant who waits on the table, fell in the grocery store, people that work in the mall, something inside me. tells me. Something inside me says, tell them. Tell them. Tell them. You say, well, I don't want to, I don't want to uh, uh, mess anybody up. You're not going to mess them up. Tell them about the Lord. You say, I want to make sure the time's right. Time's always right. 
Now I'll tell you this. When I go out and try to win somebody the Lord, I try to be sensitive to the Holy Ghost. If I talk to somebody and I say, hey, do you know the Lord died for your sins? And Oh, no, 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 no. If I really think that they're just not interested and God's, they're not under conviction and everything, I tell them, I'll be praying for you and I'm going to leave my track and I'm going to come back. I'm not going to just fast talk somebody into getting saved or making a profession just so I can come back and say I want a soul. That's, you're doing them more damage that way than you would if you never even said nothing to them if you make them make a false profession. But I want to tell you something tonight. There are hundreds of people that are ready for a different life and they're waiting on somebody to tell them there's a better way if God's people will do it. You, say, you hear so much, and you better watch it. You hear so much of these preachers talking, preaching about this easy believism. If you're not careful, you'll never witness to nobody. Amen? I don't think you can go out on your lunch break and win five souls. I think that's going overboard. But at the same time, I don't think you're just supposed to sit and wait on the knock on your door and ask you how to be saved. God wants us to be a balance. God wants us to be right. God wants us to tell sinners about Jesus. There's a call from within. One preacher told another preacher who was a great soul winning preacher, this pastor was talking to another and he said, now, he said, if you want to have a big evangelistic church and reach people and be a soul winner, he said, that's fine. I have no problem with that. But he said, I prefer just to pastor a small little church and keep the same people and not have any problems and have a large library and, and spend my time reading and just feed the sheep. And the other preacher looked at him and he said, there ain't nothing wrong with you, buddy, that couldn't be fixed. Just like any uh, any harlot or drunkard or liar or thief. A trip to the altar. A trip to the altar. A preacher who don't even care that the community is dying without God needs to go to the altar. Amen? You say, well, I'll tell you, we're interested. I, and I heard a preacher say, we're just interested in quality, not quantity. You tell him I said he needs to come to the altar and get his heart right with God. Yeah. Amen? You better be getting to talk about some, sh some sheep in the fold, some fish in the boat. Jesus died for them people. What makes you think them 30 you've got has quite a quality? God said one time, He said, I don't think you can have a big church and keep it pure. What makes you think you can have a little and keep it pure? Yeah. Jesus had 12. One of them was a devil. <laughs> yeah, you got to watch this crap. They're just backslidden. They're trying to convince you to agree with them so they'll feel comfortable in their backslidden condition. Well, we don't have a 50, but bless God, I keep it pure. Yeah, your foot too. If you got 12, you got a devil. If you got 24, you got two devils. If you got 36, you got three devils. Amen? You ain't doing better than Jesus Christ. We probably got 25 devils in here tonight. Amen. I don't know who you are, but the Lord does. You need to get right and get your heart right with God and quit messing up the church. Amen. But I tell you what, brother, listen, God said there's a call, there's a command, there's a conviction. Brother, we have a call from within. We have a call from within. Ever since I've been saved, I've had a, a burden inside me that I ought to tell people about the Lord. I can't understand. I can't understand how we can just let people walk by us all day long. I mean, not even give them a track, man. Not even give them a track. Listen, some of you people, I told, I told the teenage girls in our class this morning, I said, you girls, some of you are so, you've got such good personalities. People like you. You know what? If you just use that to be a soul winner, you could bring somebody to church with you almost almost every Sunday. If you just use what you got. See, they know me. Son, I can go out to preach. They know me. Some of them start turning like this. Uh oh, there's a preacher. You know, I get. But you can sneak up on them. Hey, Aaron, how's it going? Hey, Amen. Listen, if God made you pretty, use that prettiness for His glory. All them boys ask you out and say, yeah, come to church Sunday and I'll sit near you. I ain't riding with you, but I'll sit near you. Better yet, you can sit near me. Don't ever be caught back in there. No young people should be back past four rows back. Amen? 
or five, something like that. Get up here and make them get up here and sit down. Amen. You boys. Got you. I mean, you know, get girlfriends, people like your car. Use it to get them to church. Why do you think God give it to you? Not only is there a call from above, a call from without, a call from within. Lastly, there's a call from beneath. The Bible said in Luke 16, the rich man died and in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torment. And he cried. Father Abraham! Send Lazarus! He's crying from hell, folks. And he can dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. There's a call from beneath. If we could hear the scream. I heard about a 20-year-old out in Oklahoma heard the preaching. The next day, 1.40 in the afternoon, I believe it was, killed instantly by a train. No time to pray, no time to repent, no time to talk to God. Gone. Just like that. He's crying tonight. Oh, God, please help me. An old man came to some services some time back. Wouldn't get saved. And then died. And he was screaming, Oh God, don't let me die like this. Oh God, don't let me die like this. Why do you think God gave you your ability to talk? Ability to influence people? Why do you think God gave it to you? It ain't to use for the devil. I was thinking about next Sunday night or the next one, probably two weeks tonight. Once again, bringing my slide presentation on, on the horrors of hell. I'm trying just to have a big soul winning service here in our church where we labor and pray and fast and try to reach lost sinners for the Lord Jesus Christ. That's all it's going to matter real soon. Real soon. That's all it's going to matter. Aren't you glad somebody got the gospel to you? Lord, lead me to some soul today. Teach me, Lord, just what to say. Friends of mine are lost in sin and cannot find their way. Few they are who seem to care, and few they are who pray. Melt my heart, fill my life, give me a soul today. I taught the young people in Sunday school class how to use the Romans road. You don't have to use the Romans road. You can use John 3, you can use John 5, you can use Revelation, you can use Isaiah, you can use almost any book in the Bible to tell somebody how to get right with God. There's all kind of unconventional ways to tell somebody how to be saved. However God's blessed you with, however you can do it, do it. I told them, say, kids, get you somebody, set them down and say, listen, if you died tonight, would you go to heaven? If they say no, say, well, I'd like to take the Bible and show you what you've got to do to be saved and then take it and show it to them. And then when they get through... Say, if I bowed my head with you right now and prayed with you, why don't you ask Jesus to save you? Will you do it? Let them make the decision. You don't pressure them. It's their decision. One, do the talking. The other, pray. I believe God will make soul winners out of us. You know what I'd like to see? During these next six weeks when we... In the Bible, now you notice this. Sometimes you always try to do something for God, but every once in a while you put on a special effort and a special push. During these next six weeks, it would be a blessing to have 50 people every Thursday out on telling somebody about the Lord. If you can't go on Thursday, go another time. You don't have to go on Thursday. But this is the time we do it as a joint effort for the glory of God. And God honors it. We've seen lots of these people, a lot of people in here got saved because of what happened to them on Thursday night on visitation. Amen? Or Monday night or whenever we went. But the dicky back there, one of our deacons got saved on Monday night visitation. I can name you over and over and over. Brother Ray over here, Brother Ray Blankenship got saved. Somebody went and seen him on visitation. I'm telling you, there's other dickies, there's other rays, there's other people out there right now. There ain't much of preaching, I know that. 
I know the devil hates any time you try to make an effort. And it's been very hard for me today for some reason. The Lord knows my heart. The Lord knows my heart. I want to be a soul winner. By His grace, I want to dedicate myself tonight to win somebody to the Lord during our fall program. During these next, you say, I don't believe in it. You need to ask the Lord to have mercy on your wicked heart. Somebody come and told you one day. Amen. Amen. Somebody told you one day. Somebody told me. I'm saved tonight. Somebody prayed. Somebody had a burden. Somebody fasted. And the Holy Ghost of God convicted me of my sin. Somebody had the doors of the church open and pointed me to Jesus. It'll work. The gospel still works. And it's an answer to McDowell County's needs. There's a call from beneath. Sometimes I imagine people in hell. And I imagine people I went to school with screaming. Saying, help me. Help me. Help me. Please, help me. Please, somebody help me. And I thank God... You use me however you want to use me to keep that from happening to somebody else. Amen. Let's bow our heads for prayer. What I want to do tonight, I want to issue a challenge and an invitation of every person who would say, I tell you what I'm going to do, preacher. I'm going to ask God to make me a soul winner. I ain't much, I don't know much, can't do much, don't know much about the Bible. But I know enough to where I can take, I can tell a sinner how they can get saved. Amen. The altar's filling up tonight. And like I said, I know I ain't much of a preacher tonight. I'm sorry, I, it, ain't, it ain't been much. But I'll tell you one thing, God knows my heart, I want a burden for lost souls. I want a burden for lost sinners. I mean that. I mean it. That's all that's going to matter. One day, when Jesus comes back, let's do it, church. Boy, wouldn't it be a blessing if we had 50 people out every Thursday night, maybe even 75, maybe even 100. Glory to God. Who would make up your mind every Thursday during this six weeks, I'm going to come out. For six straight weeks, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it starting this Thursday night. We got visit. We have folks to pair up with. If you're shy, we'll send you somebody that ain't. Amen. Hallelujah. If we'll make an effort, God will honor it. Cast your bread on the water. Thou shalt find it after many days. Heavenly Father, do what ought to be done in our heart, in our church, our lives. God, let us be a soul winner. Please, Lord. Please. Please, Lord, let us be a soul winner. Make me a soul winner. Please, Lord Jesus, God, do it for our church. In Jesus' name we pray and for Jesus.